All right, you're uh, listening to the final broadcast at L.A. Radio Studio. We're calling it, okay, hand uh, quotes, finger quotes up in the air. We're calling it the final broadcast here because uh, the Ports of Call Village here along the L.A. Harbor is uh, slated for total demolishment. Is that the word? Demolishment? Demolition. Demolition, thank you. And um, demolishment should be a word. It makes logical sense. English is about the worst language that there ever was invented, right? Things don't follow the same protocol that other languages do, but just the same. Uh, Did I dig out of that hole of idiocy yet? I think maybe I did. Uh, Half of the demolition has occurred. Uh, Another half of it is uh, remaining, including our building and the Ports of Call restaurant next door. And and it's hard to say what exactly is going to happen. And and the future of this studio is, uh, at the moment, seems perilous. But we're going to look for ways to reincarnate this one more time. It's happened a couple of times already. The studio was in Hollywood. It was in Burbank. It came here for eight years. And we're leaving on our own terms. Uh, up, the, uh, up the road from us, or up the river, down, up the down channel. The, down the channel. Down the channel from here is a, uh, is a wonderful new spot, a, a company, 35 acres uh, worth of space down there. I think maybe you call it a campus is a company called Altasi, A-L-T-A-S-E-A. Um, that stands for High C. Is that what High that? C. The, that's correct. And uh, the uh, CEO, Tim McOsker, Tim McOsker is mm-hmm. here uh, in the L.A. Radio studio. This is wonderful to see you. Uh, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's my second time in the studio, first time on the air with you. Oh, very good. So um, tell me more about Altasi. What exactly is that about? First of all, Alta C as an entity is a nonprofit. It's a 501c3 um, entity. And we were formed really for the purposes of bringing science and business and community together to look for solutions in the ocean, ways to advance the, the uh, conservation of the ocean's resource, resources and to protect the ocean. And we, we wound up being able to lease from the Port of Los Angeles this, this 35-acre site that you're describing where we will build our campus. You use the right word. And so it's a a 50-year lease on a 35-acre campus at what's called City Dock 1, which is really just down the main channel from where we are right now. And our purpose is to bring businesses together, businesses that are all doing innovations in the ocean, to bring science on the site. We have a, a prospective tenant in the science area, and also to bring community spaces so that we can bring all ages, K through 12, graduate students, adults, you know, the entire community to the site to experience how science and business can work together to preserve the ocean. Right. So the preservation, but are there other enterprises, exploration, uh, uh, utilizing the ocean for other means, perhaps uh, desalinization, or who knows? I I don't know what's out there on the scientific uh, uh, horizon. Uh, Things that have happened so quickly in in, uh, technology make you think, man, in five years, you guys staying busy over there at Alta Sea, who knows what's out there? You said it, who knows what's out there. Uh, when, When I was growing up in the 70s, we were looking to the skies, we were looking to the heavens, and here in Southern California, we had this great explosion of aerospace, and out of aerospace came things we would never imagine, like your cell phone and like all of the technologies that are around us. We know more about the heavens, more about other planets than we know about the bottom of the ocean. So there's a great opportunity to do exploration with the ocean to see what we can do to preserve the ocean, but also what treasures, what opportunities exist there. For example, for example, um, we have a growing population in the world, and it's going to be impossible for us to grow food for this population on, on the land. There are opportunities to do farming, to do sustainable, healthy, ecologically safe farming in the ocean to grow foods for this growing population. That's just one area that we see exploding. We think we think we're going to have explosions in creating energy, sustainable energy, and we think we're going to have new discoveries in the ocean in the near future. And and you're going to have submarines, I bet. We have su- yeah, we are going to have submarines, and we actually have submarines. You have submarines. We have submarines. Wow. But, What's really cool about this site is that it's also a historically significant site. At the turn of the uh, the 1900s in World War I, this was a sub-base, old-fashioned sub-base. We have pictures of Warehouse 60 with these really cool-looking, antiquated little submarines in black and white. I wish we had them in color. Well, well, this must mean that your spot in the channel must be 
dug out fairly deep. It is. We are at City Dock One. We actually because because we have two sides of water. We have we are on the main channel where we have really great depths, and we also have a a finger of water on the other side, which is probably thirty six to forty two feet deep. Right. Okay. So once the campus is built out, and the work is being done, uh, the educational opportunities must be great. They're, they're absolutely fantastic. So as we bring in each new business, for example, Boeing has signed a lease, and they're the ones with the submarine. As we bring in each new business, the businesses are required not only to pay rent, and, but they're required to participate in educational opportunities, internships, job development, open houses. And every, time, every single time we talk to a business, they are excited to do that. So, we're, so throughout the business center, we're going to have all these opportunities. And then when we open the research campus, we will be doing the same thing. Oh, research campus. And so to qualify to be a researcher there, you must uh, belong to a university. Right? Yes. We have, a, we have an MOU, a Memorandum of, of Understanding, not a full lease yet. But mm-hmm. we have an agreement with something called the Southern California Marine Institute. And it's very cool. It's 23 universities and institutions that are all doing marine and ocean research. So it's USC, UCLA, Occidental, the state colleges, state universities, and they already exist. They already have a a loose coalition. They work together on Terminal Island. Mm -hmm. They will be coming to our site, and we're going to be building for them a 60,000-square-foot campus, I call it. Right, and a place for them to dock some of their boats, perhaps, because many of them do have boats that go out and survey. I mean, I went to Cal State Long Beach, Mm -hmm. And we went out on a boat one day with a professor and uh, br- brought up soil samples mm-hmm. from the deep because he was a worm expert. And he <laughs> wanted to look at the worms on the deck of the boat. And that's, uh, he pulled up one of those tubes and dumped out the little uh, cylinder of mud and went through it. He said, look, there's a, this kind of worm. That's my favorite worm. Oh, great, professor. Cal State Long Beach is a big, a big player in the, the SCMI. And right now they have one of the, one of the great uh, shark scientists in the world. Right. I've had him on this show. Have you? Yes. Uh, Chris well, Lowe. on my show, Phil Hewlett and Friends. He's yeah. been on the program to talk about sharks. Well, Dr. Chris Lowe is the, actually the chairman of this SCMI board now, and he's a big, a big proponent of ours. Yeah. How about that? All right. So uh, you, you've got the education, the uh, higher education. But then uh, will you also have opportunities for uh, high school and middle school and, and elementary school kids? We will. We have uh, strategic agreements with different organizations, L.A. Unified School District, Junior Achievement, Boys and Girls Club of the Los Angeles Harbor. In our Boys and Girls Club program, we have a class that just started this summer, and it's in uh, aqua farming or aquaculture and blue robotics or building robots and putting them in the sea. Wow, that adds some color to what do you want to be when you grow up? That's Uh, right. Yeah, these are things that uh, we would have never thought of, right? It it used to be doctor, police, uh, you know, fireman, whatever. Now the opportunities are so spectacular. Now, uh, a 50-year lease... Uh, that's a long time, uh, considering how fast technology moves along. Uh, it must be difficult to have a forward-thinking statement as an organization, but you probably have something to that effect, I would think. We do. We do. What we, what we describe this as is bringing together entrepreneurs, business persons, scientists, community, and government looking for solutions to the world's most pressing problems. And those problems may change over time, but we're looking at climate change, right. food security, mm-hmm. energy supplies. Right. And, and uh, that's the blanket statement. Is there a timeline for achieving some? Uh, do, you, do you have a goal-oriented timeline yet, or is it too soon for that? Uh, no, it's not. Well, we have, we have really significant and onda- audacious short-term goals, and that's to build out the campus. Uh-huh. So our immediate goals are to begin construction late this summer or in, in the fourth quarter of this year. Jobs right there. And those are jobs right there, construction jobs. We have a $20 million build in our uh, project one of phase one, and that's on the business warehouses. And then we move to the scientific center, and we expect there will be significant construction that will occur over the next two years. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, While you're building, can I talk to the uh, uh, architect about perhaps uh, creating a a broom closet where we could continue doing what we do here at L.A. Radio Studio? That would be absolutely fantastic. What? Really? That That would be fantastic because, again, there are so many opportunities to incorporate and incorporate uh, the community into the project. We're going to have scientists, we're going to have business, we're going to have community folks, we're going to have kids. It would really make sense to us if there was an opportunity for us to work together to have a studio within the facility 
and to do some of to discuss some of our some of our research, some of our scientific discoveries, some of the new business opportunities, but maybe most importantly to have kids be able to describe how the site is working. Yeah, the the two top podcast uh, categories are storytellers and science. Really? And uh, TED Talks, TEDx uh, is a good example, and uh, I think maybe it's time they shared the wealth a little bit because of the uh, innumerable... Uh, level of scientific knowledge that we'll, we'll be walking through there in the form of professors and researchers and, and uh, high school and middle school and elementary school kids, the opportunities for a whole network of programming, 24-7 perhaps, I, I think is uh, is perfect for what you have planned there. That would be great. It does not surprise me. We do open houses now uh, every other month, and when we do the open houses, we have scientists who can't... Who who stand in front of an audience and do a TED type talk, and they talk about like Chris Lowe came just about a month and a half ago, and he was talking about sharks along the western, along the western coast, and folks were mesmerized. If we just put a, a microphone in front of them, it, we might be able to talk to millions right. of people. Yeah, and, and here's here's the thing. I, I mean, you will uh, rely, no doubt, on uh, um, uh, non traditional sources of revenue to operate. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, one thing that uh, National Public Radio figured out when they used to do their begathons on the radio, once they started turning their shows into uh, podcasts, they uh, so ridiculously outstripped their fundraising goals really? by the revenue they were getting from advertising and sponsorship on their podcast that they don't really care that much about the begathons anymore. They just do it for nostalgia's sake. Wow. And so the potential there to, uh, I don't know, you might need an extra 35 acres to build out if you start doing <laughs> podcasts. <laughs> well, we have a big ambitious plan, and we're a 501c3. The good news about any revenue sources for us is that it all gets pumped back into our yeah. our nonprofit purposes. So mm -hmm. it all goes back to education, job development, inspiring the next generation of scientists. Right. And uh, with those scientists, uh, support staff and all of that, once the construction jobs are done, uh, you'll have a, a need for uh, staff from the community as well, right? We we will. We, we envision just in our business center we'll have about 350 jobs. Yes. We expect that once the Science Center is built out, we will be well over 750, 800 jobs. And those are just direct jobs. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you th talk about economic development and job development, there's also secondary jobs. Yes. Folks are going to eat breakfast somewhere, have mm -hmm. lunch somewhere. They're right. going to buy their clothes. They're I mean, we really think that this is a very important economic development tool for the, for the area. Before you guys came along, what was happening at City Dock 1? It was lying empty. It was just a place for birds and feral cats. And the occasional film shoot. And the occasion, that's true. The, uh, there is still the occasional film shoot, and we will probably still be open for business on the occasional film shoot. Yeah. It's a, great, it's a great piece of water and a great piece of land. There's an idea. How can people keep track of what's going on with Alta Sea? We have a website, um, altasea.org, but we also have, um, we have uh, open houses. We really encourage folks to show up at our open houses. Our next one is July. I should know the date, but I don't have it on me. <laughs> oh, so there's something there to look at now as opposed to the cobwebs and the, and the rats. There is, there. there is something there. We have uh, a handful of tenants that are on the site. We have about as many oh. as we can accommodate so on the site now. Some has been built out already. Then. Some has been built out. We have Boeing on the site with the Echo Voyager. We have something called Catalina sea ranch that are already doing uh, ocean farming we have something called blue robotics which is a great little startup company that is that is a part of our um, academic uh, enterprise with the kids wow just under my nose all of this was built up and, and i wasn't paying attention that's right so now we are paying attention and uh, you are you getting the proper attention from the media about this we are getting quite a bit of attention, actually. Yeah, that's um, good. We are, we, I really am, am pleased that we're getting so much support from the local community. Mm -hmm. Local community, I get stopped in the grocery store and at 7-Eleven um, all the time, and folks say, we're really excited about what you're doing. We're looking forward to it. And by the way, my kid loves the ocean. Can he get a job? Yes, right. And uh, we are looking forward to that time when we have internships and mm -hmm. job development and, and you know plenty of jobs that will be all through our partners at the site. And integrated with the uh, curriculum at the local universities, uh, that whole group that you talked about. Throughout the high schools, the universities, the middle schools, everyone. Fantastic. Well, we're going to keep track, and I'm going to come over and say hello. Good. Take a look at what you have going on over there, and perhaps we can talk some more about uh, podcasting and about this studio and that would be fantastic we would we would really be honored to, to, to go down that path oh gosh uh, the honor would be all ours well there you go the hands are up in the control room and uh, a pleasure to see you here today sir uh, 
Uh, and we're going to watch what happens with Alta C. Tim McCosker, thank you so much, sir. Thanks Let's very shake much. Your hand. A All pleasure right. to see you. Thanks All for right. coming down thank to you. LA Radio Studio. You hear that, Mike Stark? Thumbs up. Oh, he's he's speechless. He's got a microphone right in front of him. He can't even talk. So we're going to do a little musical interlude here. Does it need an introduction? No, it does not. <laughs> All right. <laughs>